Good afternoon, Scott Riley, T3 Live, Chief Strategic Officer. Uh, it is Monday's recap, and what a day it was. <laughs> you look at where things were uh, last night, um, I think while some were trying to catch up on Homeland or watch some TV, while everyone on Twitter sphere was you know, texting about or tweeting about gold and commodities and everything going on. You know, meanwhile, you know, <laughs> the metals bounced very violently, you know, crude. This morning we talked about um, you know, not shorting or pressing into the weakness, but maybe cover and buy versus a 30 minute low. And then you had um, the overall weakness in the markets that was pretty spread out. Um, a lot of people were, you know, asking me over the weekend, you feel uncomfortable the first time you're so net short in a while, because I was short um, the Spiders, short the Qs, short the Russell. I had three shorts on that side and just a call spread um, on both funded sides with um, a little bit of Twitter. And I was like, you know what? Friday's action to me was just. Um, a little bit of um, a sell signal, not a blaring top, not a, you know, run for dodge where the market's going to crash. But you know what? Things felt tired. It felt like they tried to, to push them into the end of the week in order to make everyone happy, go lucky and go on your uh, Thanksgiving escapades of shopping. And then just with the commodity volatility, just felt like one of the right things to do. So let's just fast forward to where we are now, what happened today, triggering as far as the charts and what we could look at to tomorrow. You go to the chart of um, the SPX. So no big deal here. You know, this was Friday, um, and uh, I was thinking, you know what, it's getting a little choppy up here. You saw the Russell break its upper, uh, its upper level. Um, tech was a little weak, so I was like, you know what, I'll be short a little spiders, okay? And then today, for the first time, it traded below the eight-day moving average and closed below it, okay? If you look at the trend, ever since this V bottom, okay, we have not done that yet. So as a, as a, a, a technical trader, someone that looks at short-term composure, doesn't mean it's game over. It means some momentum is out of this and perhaps look for a two-way trade. And we've been seeing a two-way trade, you know, recently regardless, okay? But for now, you broke the eight day and um, the 21 day is all the way down here. So um, we'll see if you know, if this does actually get here, okay? Because who knows, maybe it doesn't. This is 2038. What we now know today is today, you know, is the low of 2049. So we filled the gap, little downside follow through. I did cover my spider short. I'm not short coming into tomorrow. If I had a, you know, a water gun to whatever or a snow shovel to back, I probably would say be short overnight versus long. And um, we'll see what happens next. The reason why I went with the IWM is because you look here, you know, look at that potent down move. Okay, this was a potent down move where it engulfed this upper uh, flag and it already took out the eight days. So to me, something said, okay, be a little short the, the Russell, which is something I rarely do. And I, you know, wound up working out pretty well for the crew. You know, the, the spiders were here, okay, not even below the eight day. The Russell, which has been somewhat of a leading indicator a lot, um, closed below it and then gave you a day two to the downside. So we'll see what's next. Granted, maybe I should have held the Russell short, but I'm not a good short, so I just took the trade. Nice day and a half move. Um, instead of chasing it here, you know, uh, you, you, you got to see that it engulfed the eight day, and now it's down here. Um, we'll see what goes on next. You know, is this a head and shoulders top pattern? If that's the case, you know, um, and, the, and the bears want to keep some pressure on, now this time, you know, they don't let um, the right shoulder you know, bust out. They don't let uh, maybe the, the bulls reclaim 116.50 and it builds and then you could see um, more downside, but you don't know. Okay, we've seen this a few different times. Last time, remember this small little red dog reversal right here? You know, it gave you this little mini um, head and shoulders pattern you know, and the right shoulder didn't build and then you had your reversal to a new high. So at this point, trade is off for me. Now see what's next. See if the bears could actually, you know, contain this bounce if it tries to bounce. Tomorrow, who knows, maybe it opens lower and you get a red dog reversal just for a trade back above uh, this 114.81. But for now, two days down, this helped lead the move lower. Technology, which we were also short the Qs, you know, first um, down day, not a, not a crazy down day, but you know, right on the eighth day. Um, I don't think you should be in a rush rush, okay? The 21 days all the way down here. Um, this trend, you know, from, from this last breakout is still intact. So I would say hopefully you lightened up a little bit on Friday, you know, and then today you made some money from the short side. Um, as far as uh, high beta names, you know, last week there were some good trades out there. Last week you had Facebook give you um, a, a potent day one. Okay, that was the day I bought some calls. We traded the stock and also gave you a day two. On um, the day two is when we, you know, we put together the call spread. 
Okay, it helped fund it because if you buy right and then you sell when you get that extension, it helps fund your calls by selling the outer strike. So anyway, you look at Facebook and this was the tight pattern here. Okay, and you want to make sure you see commitment to moves. And this, you know, at this point, remember this day, it looked as if, you know, we were going to trade below. It looked like it was, you know, game over here for Facebook. And the next day you had your red dog reversal, got it back in the range. And then you had this day one right there, boom. That was the day we put on the calls. Um, was long overnight, and then you had your day two, okay, in, in, in these days when I sold some calls to create the spread and went into the gap, okay, and then you had a doji. So today the question was, would you see commitment to this move in Facebook? Can it flag again to go higher? Can we even hold maybe, um, you know, the, the top, you know, end of this move from here? Okay, what happened? No, okay, it basically engulfed um, the majority of that two-day move telling you it's back to this choppy, monotonous trade. <laughs> you know, it didn't hold higher. You can go to your Fibonacci retracements, whatever you want to do. Just eyeballing it, you know, if this was going to be any good, it should never have um, really given back this amount. And if you read my note, I talk about where I would like to see Facebook hold, if not back to the range type trade. Now, tomorrow we'll see what happens. We'll see if we get a little red dog reversal for just a tactical trade around 74.80 or not. Twitter, I came in long, okay, and it made some sense to be long, right? You know, you had um, a little bit of a wake up um, on, I think it was, uh, what was that, Wednesday? And then on Friday, you had a day two, so I was going to stick with some. But to me, I said, in order for Twitter to be any good, it should hold above Friday's low. If it wanted to go sideways to perhaps make another trade here, okay, into the gap. And this has been below all the moving averages, so when something's below all the moving averages, I watch it close because in fast markets, you know, <laughs> you have to trade these quickly. So my stop in my mind was 40.50. So if you use that stop also, you saved yourself a dollar fifty. Okay, you know, um, and it sliced through it pretty fast. You had to be, you know, pretty, um, pretty quick. And that's what you have to do when you trade fast stocks. So um, some guys are going out short this, and I will say, you know, who knows what tomorrow brings, but. You know, it engulfed this whole lower range, and this looks like more of a short than a long. I did not take it short. Some guys did, you know, but, you know, I'm definitely not long it now. It just negated that whole thing. The same way here. Look, this igniting bar, you know, got in, you know, engulfed uh, the day after, and it just showed no commitment, and this showed no commitment, so you move on. One of the surprises was probably Apple today. Not a surprise that it was down, just surprised how much it was down. And, you know, in my note, a lot of people are like, oh, when are you going to get back in some size on, on Apple? You know, you've been pretty much out of it since around 115. And I've been thinking to myself, I, I, will, I want another setup. I want another setup. I can't, you know, I want a meaty trade. And um, so uh, today there was that mini little flash crash in Apple, which it felt like. Some say it was because Morgan Stanley lowered their technology weighting. So a half percent had to come off of whatever it was in Apple. Combine that with the eight day breaking for the first time where a lot of people have their stops if they were trailing it. And then you had an air pocket. When stocks are really extended, you have a quick air pocket until there's some support. And if you look at Apple, Apple hit one of those air pockets. We talk about meaty setups. Okay, here was your first meaty setup on this gap and go after it announced a split. Next meaty setup was after it consolidated a big move from the low 70s into the hundreds. There was your gap up. Then this was your last little meaty move. And then since here, I've been very light because I just felt at some point it's going to be vulnerable. At some point, something could happen and I just don't want to be involved, you know, with any kind of size. So today, you know, I came in flat Apple. I bought a little bit, you know, because of the upgrade and then I got out quick. My out was right here when it broke this upper flag upper flag broke around 118 and uh, you know actually the low here was yeah, 118 so that was my out some guys got short there and they got real <laughs> rewarded but overall this upper accelerated trend now is broken so Apple changed a little bit it actually came into where you know the prior breakout so now we'll see what's next it's definitely shook the tree a little bit I don't know I'm sure somebody might come out and upgrade or this and that you know I'm gonna give it some time before I just look to get long it um, I did actually, <laughs> during the process, it, when it flashed down below 112, I got along a little, and that was a nice little trade, but, you know, it was for peanuts. You know, you look at the five-minute chart, you know, and uh, it, there really was not much action after that. You had this little wedge pattern that looked like it might retrace to the upside, and then it rolled over. This looks like one big H pattern, actually. Here's the pull. 
here's your H. So if you, you know, sold some of the strength, then it rolled down, and then you'll see what happens tomorrow. But for me, you know, it was a quick little trade in here, um, you know, it's, but nothing much more thereafter, okay? But this now um, needs some time, okay? We'll see what happens next here. If the bears want to stay in some control here, they probably won't let uh, Apple trade above, you know, this 116.60 too, you know, too quickly. And then, you know, we talked about how, you know, Baidu's holding, but it just, it's vulnerable because there's not a lot of momentum out there. And Baidu today broke its 21-day, first time in a while. So Baidu, hopefully you got stopped out. It was not really giving you much momentum during this part of the move, okay? So that's why it hasn't been on my VTF, and I haven't been overly enamored with it. You had a nice trade here. You had a nice reversal down here. But when nothing else is breaking out, you know, especially with China down overnight, this, you know, this was vulnerable. Um, so now it's just a different type of trade where I don't think you have to be in a rush to buy this. And at some point, it might even, you know, see a little bit more downside. As far as BABA, okay, BABA, I, you know, if you, if you come into this, okay, um, here was, you know, the first real good trade when a trade triggered above 90 and then 92 half, and then when it consolidated again here, okay, and then you had your red drug reversal right there, then it broke the eight day, First time breaking the eighth day, if you didn't sell it here, that was where you sold it. And then we caught a nice little bounce. Okay, remember this bounce? I was at the trade show, it was long BABA. And then into this move, I said, I'm done with BABA. And I also bought the calls. And then this is when I created the spread. So it was nice to buy the calls, the um, 115s here, and then up here, sell the 125s. And, and then you had this like wedge type pattern. So to me, I did come in thinking that I would like to have an opportunity in BABA. That perhaps this wedge could resolve to the upside. So my rationale was maybe it can go from red to green. But then, you know, as I came back from the morning call and I was sitting at my desk, it was down like two bucks. And then I see people in the chat posting an article from Forbes saying, you know, how it might be, you know, not be able to keep up its business model. And then you saw on CNBC the whole sales talks thing. And then you saw Hedgeye put a sell on it. So I'm like, you know what? I'm going to wait and see. I'm not playing the cost average game down like I did the last time because I don't think, you know, I could be saved. So you go back to the chart and here is a 21 day. Okay. So this was what held the last time. So if you were just trying to see if it continues to, to have this same type of trade, that should have been your out. Okay. I was thinking perhaps if it would held normally, maybe you get a move to the upside above 113.50, but not only did it open lower, it sliced through this real fast. Okay. So now, you know, you, you, you had a, a high, a lower high. It broke below the, the, the 21 day, you know, kind of tested um, the prior breakout. So at this point, it needs a little bit of time to, to regroup and rebuild. So you'll see me a lot less active in BABA unless it's a very compelling trade. And for right now, it's not a compelling take home long or short. It's a wait and see. I actually took off my, my call spread at the end of the day because, you know what, um, at this point, it does not look <laughs> as if it's going to be taken out 120 anytime soon. You know, maybe it, uh, you know, it, it builds a new pattern here where it goes sideways, you know, for a, a while and then creates a new descending type channel here, which you never, again, you don't know how long that takes. So you could extend it this way. And then at some point, if it were to break above this and show um, a new uh, direction, then maybe I put a different spread on. But right now, why get sucked into the time decay? So at this point, hopefully, um, you get, if you were long the stock and not the options, you got stopped out at the 21 day, okay, because that's what we talked about. And who knows, maybe you even made a little bit of money short. I think some people in the VTF made some money short on this. Talking about shorts, um, Laz sent out a nice off the charts alert for Tesla. We also talked about how Tesla's not the same. You have low oil and you have just the wishy washiness and the PE and the this and that. It just hasn't been acting well and it finally broke lower. Um, 240 gave out and that was in a nice little short if you got short on the ascending channel. A lot of people are giving Laz a lot of kudos. And you know what? When things uh, are set up from the short side, he tends to be comfortable putting it out there. And this broke right here and broke below 240. If you were long, that was your stop. Okay, so then that was a nice move. You have the 200 day right here. If this were to, you know, go sideways for a little bit here, you know, maybe you get another nice short trade below this 229, and especially if it takes out the 200 day. Now, if you look more in a macro sense, hmm, on, on a macro, you know, maybe you have this left shoulder, you have a, a big head, 
<laughs> like mine, I have a big head and big shiny forehead, um, right shoulder, and this actually could almost be like, you know, uh, you know, a pretty big level for this thing, just drawing it out of the, off the top of my head. So this is trade one, if it stays around here, this could mean more downside for, for Tesla. So again, um, when momentum stocks are above the 8 21 day, I tend to look for long opportunities when they're below. I either avoid or take tiny little tactical trades and, and move on. If you look here, you know, <laughs> this is below all the moving averages, okay? So when it's below all the moving averages and curling down, you're not looking just to be long this thing, okay? You're looking for maybe some short setups, maybe small RDRs and keep it light. Um, as far as gold, <laughs> what are you going to do? You know, for me, you know, we've been trying to be long this. We had a really nice trade here. Tried to stay with it as it built this nice <laughs> little upper wedge, okay? And then on Friday, got stopped out. Why not? It broke below this 113.40, which I was looking at. And then today, blast off. So um, if you were short it, you know, overnight, it, you know, you <laughs> it closed on the dead lows, but you just had to know that this is gold. It's erratic, it's random, and it's hard and violent. And it definitely squeezed a lot of people out today. I guess now if we were to hold this 115.75 moving forward, you could see a move to retest the moving averages here, but you're going to see me not do much here. You know, I got a little beat up on it on Friday, but it always could be worse. So anyway, you know, that was your gold move. Oil, we did talk about not pressing the down open, that there was enough people calling for $40, $50 oil. You know, the time to have sold oil was when it broke this trend line or broke support here, went below the 200 day, broke this pivot, broke this pivot. <laughs> then broke this pivot and into this emotional gap down, not a spot to short, you know, maybe even look for a long versus the first 30, 60 minutes, uh, or you could have waited for a red dog reversal and reclaim this low here. That was uh, 2546. What I talk about when I say the first 30 to 60 minute low is like this, okay? Here is, here is, your, here is yesterday, okay? This is your, um, the low, okay, on right there, on um, actually say the open, just say even the low right here is, um, like 2540, once it, 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 it started to get traction, 2560, here's your stop, you know, or this was overnight, by the way, and, and then you let it go. Um, XOM, somebody asked me what could be good. I was like, you know what, I think XOM has a big yield, and, you know, it's probably one of the quality names in the oil patch, and there's a big gap, and, and uh, it reversed and came in there a little bit, and who knows? Maybe it fills more of it, but again, below all the moving averages, just to trade. It needs a lot of time before you think you could be um, holding it for a swing. X <coughs> XLE also, some are saying, hey, you got you know, red dog reversal right here, which was good for a trade versus the prior low. So now this could be a potential double bottom. So if I were you and you traded this long, which I didn't today, if you bought it here and it had a nice trade, just take home a third. You don't want to take home more than a third. Okay, just a third because still below every moving average, broken trend, very emotional sector. Be a little careful. So, with all that said, you know, in high beta land, it feels like things are a lot more broken than they are uh, constructive or looking to break out. So, that's one, you know, caution flag. If you went short the indices with me overnight and made some money, congratulations. If you're staying with them short, you know what? <laughs> Probably a decent idea, but for me, you know, I just would rather be flat if we open down. Maybe I'll look for some RDRs or, or, or not. I'm not so you know, sold that the market's going to just roll down, but we could pull in to the 21-day average, which I showed you. Oh, real quickly, just to show you how things change quickly, look at Amazon. You know, Amazon, which has been trending very well since this higher low here, since breaking this downtrend there. You know, all of a sudden, news came out today, and, and it sliced right below the prior low, right below this, and now this is back in the penalty box. You know. For, for a little while. First big potent down day like that, and now you have to beware. Google, remember we tried being long this a few times um, for it to break its descending channel here, okay? And when something doesn't go up, when the market's going up, which usually it means it's weaker and it's below all the moving averages also. Um, some are actually short this because it closed in the lows, and why wouldn't this head down if it couldn't rally when the market was rallying? Um, perhaps means it's you know heading back down to these lows. So another candidate to short. I am not short it. So lots of things to do if you want to be long, if you want to be short, or you want to be in flat in cash. Cash is a position. This is the first time in a while that I'm going out flat. No options, no shorts, no longs. I'll wait for things to sift out. Came in, you know, pretty decent size short for me, considering in the past four to five weeks, I've had five, six, seven longs on with some hedges trading around. And, 
Now, if you look to see how the, the trade could change, the trade looks like it changed a little bit. I'm going to be tactical and we'll figure out what's next. But it's better to figure out what's next with an open mind versus being trapped. You know, a lot of people have been calling a top in this market or shorting this market for 200 some odd handles and then today declared victory. If they were trading real money, chances are they would have been stopped out a lot before, you know, this potential day and a half down move, which we just had, considering we just went, you know, 230 handles from when a lot of people were ranting that the rally is not going to, you know, have teeth. And that was around the 200 day. You know, we all know where that was in the 1900 land. So anyway, not to talk about what else anyone else is doing. It doesn't matter. It's what you do. It's what is in your control. What's in your control is your keyboard, your time frame, and your process. So hopefully, you know, today was a, a good day for you or not a bad day, and we'll figure out what comes next, and it will show its face. Have a great night.